Yeah, I mean, here's the thing, right? Can China make ships? Of, co of course it can, right? Seven, five, five. They, they may be even making smaller ones for all I know, right? Uh, upstream, though, chip making gear. A lot of folks say that is where. Uh, right, they really need to padlock this, uh, right? Because you've got names like ASML over in the Netherlands. You know, when a company like that uh, derives, manages to derive almost half of its revenue from sales to China, the West and the U.S. has a problem. Well, you know, actually, China's quite struggling in building advanced chips. Uh, today, the most advanced chip that China is reported to make is seven nanometer. That's several generations behind the state of the art at TSMC. Uh, four, three nanometer, and beyond. The industry's moving to two nanometer, really advanced new semiconductor process technology. It's going to make pack even more transistors in there. Uh, and so China, in addition to being behind technologically, is behind in the scale of production. China's factories just aren't as many as the Western com com companies have in, say, Taiwan and TSMC. And so companies like Huawei are able to brute force put together a chip that on paper might match some of the NVIDIA specifications. But to get there, they have to quadruple the size of the chip. It draws a quadruple amount of the energy, and it costs a lot more to use and is much more efficient, and they can't produce enough of them. In fact, there was a data set released by an organization uh, recently called Epoch AI that looked at over 150 data centers worldwide for AI. There wasn't a single one of them that they could identify that was based off of Chinese or Huawei chips. And that shows that China's really struggling. These export controls are having an impact uh, without some of the advanced machinery, the ability to expand their production footprint and scale down the chips. They're struggling just to be able to meet their own demand. So can they export globally and somehow swoop up and take away market share? I, I think there's some real doubts about that. Yeah, and for U.S. <clears throat> excuse me, chip export controls to successfully work, the key is... Um, that its allies, the United States allies enforcement uh, capacity needs to be there. Um, maybe some of these countries don't have as expansive enforcement capacity or willingness as the United States. Do you think the Trump administration is trying to fill in the gap here, perhaps going for bilateral agreements when it comes to diffusion rules? just so that they are making sure that these export controls work better. Absolutely. And what we don't want is a repeat of what happened last year, which is, uh, you know, TSMC reportedly produced millions of AI chips for Huawei through a cutout company from China. Um, that uh, was a tragic mistake that, you know, should not happen again. And the answer there is better enforcement, better, better monitoring. And so, you know, the advantage of the bilateral approach is that you can, in those discussions, press these allied partners to put in place more robust compliance programs, monitoring, enforcement. Many countries, in fact, almost all countries, don't even regulate the export of AI chips. It's just the United States. And the U.S. is using its extraterritorial controls to say this chip, even though it's made in Taiwan, had some U.S. software or a machine tool that helped produce it in the factory so we could control it. But we're thousands of miles away from the United States. The U.S. government has only a single digit number of export um, compliance officers out in Asia. So it's really today reliant on self-enforcement and self-policing by the industry. Um, so any more enforcement from allies and partners is going to be a benefit to ensuring, again, that the bad guys don't get the chips. Uh, we want to ensure that these chips stay in the hands of our friends, our partners and good companies in the U.S. Um, and around the world. Yeah, and let's zoom out a little bit, Jimmy, and go back to President Xi Jinping's quote-unquote fortress economy. The big contrast that I see between the U.S. and China in terms of going for future growth here is that China is seeking aggressively to reshape its economy, just as the Trump administration in the U.S. as well. But China's initiative is actually backed by aggressive funding. Which one works better? And am I missing something in this observation? Yeah, I mean, if you step back and you look at sort of who wins in the self-sufficiency game, the U.S. actually has a lot of advantages. It's energy self-sufficient. Uh, it's It doesn't have a, a number of complicated relationships, well, with its neighbors on a good day. Um, <laughs> It has uh, a, you know, control of many parts of the technology supply chain. 
Uh, and it has a relatively decent economy that up until very recently had been growing. So the U.S. is uh, very well off. In addition to that, from food self-security, the U.S. is a net food exporter. Flip it over to China. Uh, they are incredibly dependent on imports for energy, food, technology, and their supply chains. And so over the last eight years, what China under Xi's leadership has been trying to do under the five-year plan is really undergo a crash program to localize as much as possible. Uh, and I think as a result of that, they've had to make a lot of sacrifices, uh, whether it's not investing in their education or pension or health care plans. The bulk of a lot of that new government money is going into building out this hardware that's going to help uh, make China a stronger fortress food grain storage depots, underground oil reserves uh, on the East Coast. China's building over 30 plus new semiconductor factories because they're worried one day the U.S. government uh, may cut off everything or there might be some sort of conflict between uh, the U.S. and other partners with China. Uh, so they're moving very, very quickly. In fact, in the chip space, there isn't a, a material, a piece of equipment, a chip uh, that they're not localizing right now. It's really an whole of nation uh, innovation effort.